I'm Adrian McShin. I'm the Director of Engineering here at HumanMade. I'm Tom Wilmot, the founder and CEO of HumanMade. So we're here today to talk about uh, the migration of the sun to WordPress, which was a flagship project uh, in the UK publishing scene at the time. Um, HumanMade were fortunate enough to work on that uh, alongside News Corp for several years, actually. Um, maybe we can start uh, by just talking a bit about um, News Corp's goals uh, and the Sun's team's goals uh, in, in that migration to WordPress. Yeah, ultimately it started from, as with enterprises do, there was a change in uh, leadership within the uh, digital editorial space mm. um, where you know, we had new ideas were infused within the organization and they decided to ultimately change things to better meet that, those objectives that were set. Mm. And at the time for the website specifically, um, the objective was to move faster with the overall publishing process, mm. um, to have uh, so a speed to deliver the news, the, the, the product, if you like, mm -hmm. of news uh, was really important. And ultimately, um, that over the course of, of, of kind of technical dialogue uh, resulted in a choice that was uh, WordPress became the obvious choice for that re-platforming journey. And was moving off another platform um, mm -hmm. to WordPress and WordPress really stood out as, as fulfilling that brief of being fast and being familiar of allowing the flexibility for this somewhat bespoke workflow um, that was the kind of visionary statement um, that was in mind for this digital team. Maybe a, a bit of an explainer for our international listeners. The Sun is one of the UK's largest newspapers. So uh, we're talking huge amounts of traffic, you know, many millions of, of readers um, and a large editorial team. And I guess a fairly complex editorial process. Mm -hmm. I, I think WordPress's usability and flexibility as a platform uh, were, were uh, big parts of, of the uh, big, big advantages that it brought to that, to that process. Um, Maybe then we can segue a little bit into the planning for the project. I mean, this, this is a huge project, a lot of people, a lot of stakeholders, big organization. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things that you remember about how we pro approached that, approach the planning of that? Big company, big teams, a lot of teams, a lot of different departments, a lot of different stakeholders, a lot of different individuals on both sides of the, of the, of this problem and the solution side of it. Um, you know, the, the, the primary ones as it is with, with most of these solutions uh, and we're kind of, a, we're moving into that solutions lane, but obviously planning comes first. Um, we had um, editorial uh, all the way from kind of senior editorial buy-in and also the users of the system, mm -hmm. which in this case are editorial as well. Um, they've got their own structure and various stakeholders that exist within that as well. Um, and you even have things like uh, uh, maybe a, a section editor section representation. There can be different voices that apply um, mm -hmm. for each of the different areas of the website slash so publishing experience. So there's lots of publishing detail in there. Um, so understanding that and having that context in mind uh, helps to set the scene for what you might want to do when you're building the workflows and the design and the system that goes with it. Um, there was also an on-site dedicated design team um, who are a mix of the digital design, which is a dedicated function within the specific organization and also the some of the print uh, crossover you know uh, people who worked for the company for a very long time who understand the brand mm -hmm. inherently like why the colors matter why the why the voice of the design matters um, and they ultimately were able to um, uh, start to work on yeah the design language the, the framework if you like of, of how it should look and how it should feel and what it should say um, to their customers um, and um, we uh, came in uh, with a with a, um, uh, a certain um, kind of a, a specialism, if you like, uh, as WordPress experts, um, to enter in alongside that overall world. Obviously, technology has been a key part of that as well. Um, to uh, work alongside uh, the internal technology team, um, design included, um, to be able to uh, plan out um, what we're going to build, why we're going to build it, and roughly what order because we're working in an agile and scrum context in this specific mm -hmm. instance and then um, uh, work with the team to figure out you know what is what it, what do we add uh, what are our strengths um, what specifically is 
taken care of, if you like, by the internal teams? Mm -hmm. And then what bits um, are we uh, best utilized for? Um, and that is uh, partly free uh, is almost an obvious answer to some extent because you know we're known for doing the things that we do um but also you know being open and having that dialogue of how we can help best and making no maybe assumptions because again we're, we're opening in ourselves up to that agile mindset and working with roadmaps and and this idea of you've got a sequence you've got a plan and but that plan might change and yeah. you might hit hurdles overall in this case actually it went quite smooth because we did a fairly thorough and um, but also iterative planning process I mean, that's uh, something that's quite common for us when we're working with large enterprise where we are really working as part of a larger team, a larger group of people, whether that's design internal or an, or an external agency, like you say, complex stakeholder groups, uh, whether there's different departments who have responsibilities for different parts of the websites or different sections of a, of a newspaper, perhaps even an internal development team, internal IT, legal compliance. Um, and so I think that's uh, an experience we, we bring is, is uh, to these kinds of projects, uh, being able to uh, marry the requirements and the desires of, of that like diverse stakeholder group uh, with uh, the uh, good, good engineering and technology and approach to WordPress um, at scale. Um, so maybe we, let, we can talk a bit about what we did. What did the actual work? What did it look like actually to... My yeah, so, to to so yeah, absolutely. So within that dialogue, you know, uh, really understanding the brief and getting to that brief and having the open dialogue with the with all of these stakeholders, um, and again understanding you know why we're having that conversation to really set the scene of what we're doing and why, and um, that was kind of again in that planning stage. Um, moving out of that, what materialized again coming back to that brief of faster, mm. uh, more efficient, you know, and obviously the the, the, the benefits of efficiency um, is that um, there was a few primary big blocks, fairly heavy lifting blocks, actually, mm. the human made ultimately took primary responsibility for. One of those, and it's a frequent one because we're moving to a different platform, moving to WordPress, mm -hmm. and there's a big migration piece, um, as you would expect uh, for the sun, and there was a lot of content already produced, already useful. Archives are a, a massive asset um, and you're able to resurface those in different ways. And, and there's a, you know, SEO benefits and all of those things come with that archival data. Um, so moving those over to WordPress so they can be, uh, so that they operate within this new design language, uh, that they are uh, reusable where relevant, where they play a part of section mm. things. and. And also things like uh, understanding and applying taxonomy. Taxonomy is a big thing for these larger organizations, which is this idea of um, how are th how is the data itself structured? Where do things go and why do they go there? We understand those as the sports section. Um, but again, with, when you're dealing with a lot of data, um, making that straightforward is complex. Um, turning something complex into simplicity is a big part of what this work is. Um, so really, uh, we, were, we were kind of um, at that blend of them understanding these intricacies of taxonomy and probably already having one, but also marrying that up with the design yeah. and also marrying that up with um, what our ideas of what will work for WordPress. Yeah, so mapping that. CMS architecture, where things are and why, there, there's this association that you have to understand to apply appropriately. Um, again, in WordPress, you know, those typically bottom down is what we would call um, custom, tax, custom taxonomies, uh, post types. Yeah. There's lots of uh, technical details there and understanding what matches to what and um, for their specific needs. Uh, yeah, especially at that kind of scale and with that kind of uh, size of that content archive, those decisions actually end up being quite important in terms of the, making the right architectural decisions at that stage. Um, migration is something that uh, is uh, a big part of, a, of an enterprise project. Uh, un unlike you know, non-enterprise projects where often you, you can just start again. It's easier to rewrite the content for the website as part of the web project. Whereas for someone like The Sun, they've got a uh, generational history of content that's deeply important to them. And uh, I think an advantage of WordPress being so flexible, it's open, flexible architecture, uh, being that you, can, you really can migrate almost anything into, into that archive. Often we'll find we're bringing together even content from multiple different CMSs, uh, even offline sources, um, and uh, this opportunity to migrate into WordPress and unify all of that in one, um, one grand migration. 
so that was one. And you know, like, kind of migration is is a is a, a you know that kind of gets broken off. That's almost a project yeah. within itself. Um, and again, can be made we're, we're the big owners and drivers of that overall in collaboration with the relevant units within within the organization. Um, and then we had um, quite a specific but but very large and optim optimistic brief. The stakeholder side, we had the, the, their brainchild, their their specific. Uh, vision for how this might be a market differentiator for mm. for them, and, and and again, really leaning into the efficiencies aspect of of what would make the difference. They didn't just want WordPress right. in this specific case. Um, they were looking for something that, at the time, WordPress didn't really provide exactly as per the vision, and also other CMSs did really really leaning into that bespoke week. And namely, that was um, uh, what was referred to later as, um, uh, I think it was called the page builder or the, or the mm -hmm. customizer, which actually is a reused frame. And there are things that are that, but again, this was quite specific and nothing too vanglorious was used as the name at the time. Um, but overall, what it was is, is uh, the ability, and in the Sun specific case, is they wanted um, um, a fluid way for them to manage their section pages. Mm -hmm. So if when you have a home page, what goes where is intentional. Mm -hmm. um, and it should be driven, uh, partly driven by data and analytics, what's doing well, what's not doing quite so well. And then for the editorial, rather than being automated, for the editorial to use that data and apply it in real time, pretty much yeah. um, to the page layout. Nothing at the time really existed that fulfilled that brief. Sure. Um, it's a common enough problem, but but it also was specific to again the, the specific abilities the and the needs. Of a newspaper is pretty important. Of course, yeah, and I mean another story, but uh, you know the the, the uh, a common kind of um, interpretation of print is that it's relatively primitive in comparison mm -hmm. to digital, and actually digital being 120 years old is a highly mature, mm -hmm. advanced process, something that personally fascinates me. Um, and in this case, there was that blend of that complexity trying to be translated into the digital space to have that same level of control and editorial insight and application um, specifically, and, I, and again, incorporating the design language into that yeah. at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I remember that being one of the exciting phases of this project when we were able to like sit down with the editorial team and they could see the flexibility of WordPress and the uh, the power that that, uh, that that would give and like what that would enable, I suppose, in terms of like, wow, there's all these things we've been dreaming about being able to do. There's all these things that we can even do when we're laying out like our print homepages um, and we can bring those into, into the CMS directly. Um, that, that, that was a major, a major upgrade. A major win. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so there was a, that became, that tool had to be designed in turn. Yeah. Uh, how, how the toggles work, how the layout of that, uh, how it can be representative of the page, but also has the controls embedded within them. Mm. Um, none of that naturally fitted in with WordPress as it was. Um, so it was an extension at the time of what would be the customizer, which is yep. uh, something uh, sort of, a, again, a, a technical area yeah. of how you can develop certain WordPress functionality. Yeah, kind of a precursor to the block editor, I guess. Ultimately, yeah, yeah, it was, it was very much very much like that. Um, and we built uh, a bespoke uh, a framework slash platform on top of that to allow them to have this specific control. Um, and um, as a result of that, they were able to, Again, that's where most of the efficiency control meet our brief value came through. Um, ultimately, the website still and under it also was fast performant. All of those things are also kind of sure. mutually beneficial with having a site at this scale. Um, but that was one of the things that, that maybe really stood out, I suppose, as part of the brief and the execution part. Of that. Yeah, I mean, like what we often see, like when we're in the discovery phases with. Uh, with other big publishers or, or even just enterprise more broadly who are, and they're using like perhaps a legacy at more enterprisey CMS is that actually a lot of their workflow it has to be done outside of CMS and like really the final stage is you copy and paste something into the CMS um, and that's just like very inefficient. Yeah, time, it can be very people costly. You know, there's a lot of people, they can afford a lot of people, they're right. big organizations, but ultimately there's a limit to that, of course, as well. Sure. And like brittle process and make uh, compliance and uh, consistency difficult. Yeah. 
Yeah, and common common problems and, and solutions again that sit in a specific space would be um, manipulating and applying images, mm -hmm. uh, accreditation of images, a copyright associated with them. Those things do have their own process sure. that typically sit behind WordPress, but they have to be compatible. Uh, remember, there was going beyond migration. There, there's lots of integrational aspects of yeah. what's required as well. Also, ultimately developed uh, in partnership with us, which is things like. Um, for the copyright aspect of images, all our images ultimately are copyrighted and there's an obligation to report on when things are used and how and that they ultimately fulfill um, their copyright obligations. Um, so there's an integrating with the underlying image dam um, so that they're quite easily at speed being able to bring their images forward from yep. their um, dam system and have them available within WordPress. At the time, WordPress does have media management, um, but there was specific things that were required to make that work. And ultimately, that's where, the, again, the extension and the customization of WordPress really comes into its own. There's like clear efficiency gains there right now. I don't know, no longer need to use three different tools and five spreadsheets. I can do it all in CMS. There's also like a big quality jump be, uh, there because now uh, the images are so much easier to use. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use like better images each time uh, at the publishing checklist that's built into the CMS is going to mean that like all of our stories have all of the elements that they're supposed to have and aren't missing things. Uh, so you get the kind of double benefit of efficiency and, and quality, uh, both in one. We kind of touched on it a bit in planning, but I feel like this kind of uh, feature is a good example of um, this, this like working style of the us working like very closely with the users of the CMS, the design team, the internal technical team, maybe legal and IT, you know, just on the outside of that to really understand the needs of all of those and figure out how can the CMS uh, and the wider project like really uh, enable all of that. Um, Absolutely. And for us, you know, I like to think we make it seem easy. Um, but it does require to us to understand the industry. It understands us to require the user. Um, again, the specific context of that user within that industry, um, the type of solutions they're already using, what we might build to be able to fill that brief better and improve on, obviously. Um, there's lots of facets to that design UX, although primarily we don't drive the design in UX. Um, we'll be there to make sure that in turn is efficient, that ultimately we're able to realize within a reasonable time frame and that design and be able to apply it. And sometimes, in, in its best case, we collaborate with design to make sure that maybe we can go a little bit further. Maybe there's animations or something like that and that doesn't seem possible and maybe it's been turned down multiple times but we can bring it back because of that active dialogue. Um, so really our understanding a lot of the picture helps us to simplify and, and be efficient about what we do and ultimately develop software um, at the end of that overall bigger picture scale. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, a little bit uh, jumping ahead in time, but I think that's one of the things that's most exciting about like Gutenberg and the block editor and the side editor is how much it like uh, expands the possibilities in terms of like editorial control of uh, interactive elements and like co more complex layouts than, uh, whereas in the past we would have probably had to build that, build a lot of that stuff like custom in close concert with editorial teams. Now just like a lot of that's possible and uh, much more accessible, which yeah, is uh, yeah. in turn pretty exciting. Yeah, and it breaks into this this old and new ground, which is um, within within well within the publishing space specifically, um, flexibility is always required because um, you know they're pushing new grounds and they're present wanting to present a better representation of their product to the consumer, um, but also um, there there has to be for the sake of sanity an element of control and and reproducibility and and making sure that you're not diluting the brand as a result of all of that tooling. So where we find ourselves now, kind of fast forward, is 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 balancing that line. The tooling has become that much better for sure, and, and is better for better to fill this kind of modern brief. Um, but we spend our time maybe remaining it back in a little bit, putting it back into the into the context of control to make sure that um you you're you're ingraining the flexibility and understanding requirements and reapplying like the, the limits, the boundaries, yeah. um, so that uh, uh, the organization can remain efficient and there's not too many um, uh, kind of uh, uh, unfortunate workflow oversights that, yeah. uh, and, and reducing the randomness of people doing things. Like yeah. 
something that uh, we think about a lot when we're planning these projects uh, with uh, as part of that like uh, close working uh, relationship with clients is not just like the initial launch of that project, but how then that platform is going to sustain the organization and like its goals as they evolve over ideally the next like five to 10 years. I think the sun uh, is continues to run on that platform, yep. uh, you know, or, or as we get into uh, almost a decade later. Yep. Um, what are some of the ways in which that influences uh, how we approach uh, that kind of work? It's a big thing, really. I think that, you know, migrating, you know, bring it back to the start of the process, migrating in and of itself, like we described at the start, is quite big. Yeah. It's quite costly, uh, ultimately, or can be, uh, you know, depending on the complexity, depending on the volume. Um, but ultimately, it's a quite, pretty big endeavor. You know, all that work that we talked about, that has to potentially be done again. So we take very seriously. We don't want, we want to be building things in mind to make sure that ultimately as much as possible the organization doesn't have to go through this process mm -hmm. within reason and there's obviously always exceptions potentially where they have to go back to the drawing board you know that fundamentally the, the needs of the organizations can change mm -hmm. but we assume that that it won't that much and again wordpress will remain flexible and available for them to have this long-term view um, but really the, the 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 key there is is elements of you can't uh, well, you can, but, but, but you really shouldn't shortcut, you can't really shortcut anything, mm. arguably, mm. which is it has to be secure, it has to be stable. Sure, maybe you can come back later and, and potentially shore up some elements that are there, because we're, but because you're dealing at a certain element of scale, um, uh, quite often you, you don't get the opportunity. And, and for us, we know that we may not be there to be able to maintain certain elements at some point in time. Um, so really, we're always future planning, at least from a, a, definitely from a technical perspective, where we ensure that everything is bullet grade enterprise, you know, that they, those tend to come together anyway, but all of our software is ultimately bullet grade. And for WordPress, um, I think that it, it, it again, it, it, it is, and it can be, it also cannot, you know, it, because of that flexibility, sure. potentially, um, there are, um, you know, as everyone generally knows, there's a very large WordPress ecosystem. There are a number of solutions available. Quite a lot of them are off the shelf, which obviously is massively beneficial to the wide plethora of how you might apply it. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, and that can be from a small website to again, all the way to enterprise. Um, but understanding, you know, again, those specific enterprise requirements. We're building, uh, with one view, we're, we're building this project kind of to a launch and to a, a certain feature set. Um, but with another view, we're building a set of reusable modular components that are going to continue to evolve over time. Uh, in fact, we'll often work with clients and encourage them to like consider even open sourcing some of those components and sharing them with the wider world and kind of treating them as um, as uh, contributions back to the commons um, and things that, that are going to almost have their own life. Um, but even if even if they're not open sourced, the opportunity to uh, think of those as reusable as a reusable asset within the organization. Uh, I think actually that was something that worked really well at News Corp, uh, yeah, where absolutely. there was the sun, but there, there's a much broader range of publications. For sure, yeah. Things. And, and there's, there's these two open source things, which is open source, which is maybe the software and the licenses and the tangible, and then the open source ethos, which is uh, this idea that um, you know, you design modularness <laughs> because that's a good technical uh, uh, endeavor uh, for all sorts of reasons. Uh, you design reusability as an inherent element. Um, you design for reuse. Uh, you ultimately can't predict the future and you don't want to, uh, you want to reutilize and reapply the, any value you create and you don't really know in future how that might play out. Mm. Um, so open source ethos really helps with that specifically. Yeah. Um, so everything that we do can be can be almost pulled out and reapplied or, or switched on or switched off. Again, as the organization changes, which it does, um, you've got this modular concept to play with almost at all levels. Um, uh, also, you know, over the over the longer kind of uh, time frame of the sun itself, um, they ultimately went headless mm -hmm. uh, and then it now operates within a headless system. And there was a, a relatively painless transition, which, you know, was a program in and of itself um, to uh, uh, make this system available uh, through APIs, which required in the context of making something headless. And then they stacked another um, infrastructure on top of it to make that facility without having changed the, 
the core, the workflow, the WordPress aspect of what was available to the uh, editorial teams. And they were able to change the outset for, again, changing requirements, changing landscape. We haven't touched on it too much, but I guess that, you know, we're, we're uh, working with uh, someone like The Sun to like, do the work. Uh, there's also a big training element where we are working alongside their team, upskilling their team, maybe doing direct training, maybe just maybe it's just working directly with them uh, to kind of pass that on so that at some point that can start to be transitioned, maybe post-launch, the team then uh, take responsibility, can take responsibility for shipping feature updates themselves. Maybe we stick, can stay involved in a consultancy capacity. Maybe there's some, uh, maybe we come back in again when there's a spike in, uh, in, in um, new functionality or, or a new, some major new release. Um, maybe as we transition into talking just about like how it went, the legacy of that um, project. Um, one thing I think was, pre was particularly gratifying, just tying back to the open source, was to see how, you know, not only the Sun uh, succeeded off the, you know, post that migration, but the WordPress's um, usage within News Corp itself kind of flourished uh, after that. And, uh, you know, they've since moved many of their other flagship publications across uh, across the globe, yeah. really, across certainly across the US and, and Australia. Um, what were the, some of the other kind of measures of success from you know from uh, the the Sun side, from New Corp side, uh, and what are some of the kind of perhaps the measures of success that we might look to as an agency uh, several years on now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a, a few you know f fairly common uh, common uh, fundamental things there. One of them was page views themselves, you know, the, the ultimately uh, part of, uh, you know, key metric uh, that exists within you know, these large web uh, publishing platforms. Um, so there was an eye to increasing uh, volume uh, and people being able, pe existing customers um, uh, viewing the site, um, prospective customers being able to uh, also uh, uh, view the site and, and, and getting uh, the return of the content that was produced. Um, and um, there was a, a, a roughly, I think, from memory, it was about a four, maybe five fold uh, estimated uh, increase uh, predicted or, or, or hoped for yeah. slash um, uh, that, that it felt it was an optimistic goal, as these sure. things tend to be. Um, but ultimately, there was this, um, this target in mind, and that was what was driving the business decision of making the change. You know, that wasn't there. You know, why sure, we platform, that, that if you like. Context that we and our work fit into. Ultimately, yeah. yeah. There's also obviously the, the internal efficiencies, sure. which is related, but not completely related, but, but also, you know, so those are the two top and bottom uh, uh, kind of uh, requirements and that um, and at the time uh, both were ultimately met um, mm. you know I uh, don't know the exact figures but I do know what the figures were sure. um, and ultimately uh, both of those briefs uh, were checked off as, as massive successes and there was a relatively aggressive timeline from inception yep. to launch um, as you know if you're going to make a change you believe that it's great you want it sooner rather than later you know sure. uh, so ultimately uh, that came with a relatively aggressive launch date uh, and again uh, that was also fulfilled in this specific case uh, as a as a result of you know, that, that mammoth effort to yeah. collate and put together all of these individual strands something i remember uh as a, a kind of uh, a mark of success at the time uh is that an, you know a, a publication like the sun is a is a, is a, a continuous ever running you know flow of new articles they're publishing at a fast rate continuously it never stops um, and so you can't afford to turn the website off and uh, do a migration and then turn it back on the whole thing has to happen completely seamlessly with no break uh, in um, uh, in in their ability to report news you don't know when news is going to happen and so you need to always be ready uh, and so we talked a bit about the migration but actually that kind of launch day migration piece is a really important part where we're uh, we've migrated the archives and we're dual publishing for for some moments and we're uh, slowly transitioning traffic to the new site and uh, there's a lot of orchestration that goes into uh, what hopefully for the reader is a completely seamless and almost uh, from you know that the, they can't even notice necessarily uh, that you've just done a major map platform migration whilst real-time reporting the news uh, through and I, you know, I think that there were uh, the, someone like the Sun are publishing tens, if not uh, hundreds, of uh, of new articles. You know, across across all of their various um, verticals. Yeah, yeah, and because ultimately there's a 
there's a there's a profit you know associated right. with traffic for example um uh, relatively you know in the grander scheme of things uh drops are actually significant yeah. uh cost and and, and risk and, and burden for the organization so there's not a huge amount of uh, allowance uh for uh, there not to be a smooth transition so again getting that planning uh, uh kind of bang on and, and maybe rehearsed and, and tested and again that whole area um, yeah, is really key uh, and again because of the complexities you know there's a lot of things to check and um, again that idea of, of sometimes you um, sometimes you dual run sometimes you don't should you uh, uh, when it comes to there's taxonomy changes as you migrate the content you know when that yeah. gets checked um, and and uh, what what how much of the data you transfer when as part of at certain stages all sorts of planning work happens early on um, but it will also happen over the course of the project um, as you move closer to the time um, because there might also be organizational aspects to that like who's available to support it yep. um, how trained are they at that specific time we are ultimately um, uh, aware not always directly engaged with those discussions but we're always aware because it helps us to set the right objectives for us as we plan uh, what we do uh, in relation to it um okay i feel like we need some kind of just like wrap up uh piece maybe talking maybe just like yeah the sun was a flagship project in the in the uk publishing uh market uh, to the, uh, in terms of it m moving to WordPress, I think for a time it was the highest traffic WordPress um, project in, in the UK. Um, and since then, we've really seen uh, WordPress come to be like the de facto CMS for publications, right, at the, you know, right up to the very largest in the world, uh, all the way down to kind of like uh, being a great platform for local news. Um, which is, uh, you know, a, a part of the industry that um, benefit a lot from like the lower total cost of ownership and that flexibility and like ease of getting going. So it, what's your take on why WordPress, we've seen WordPress be such a, a great fit for publishing organizations, really of that like broad range of sizes? Yeah, I mean, it's a project, you know, what a success really, you know, and something I was involved in and personally very proud of. Um, but um, for, yeah, the, the, it's not something, it's, we do this work quite a lot. It, it's always such a great thing for it to happen. We love this opportunity to be bringing WordPress into these spaces. Um, but really, yeah, some of all the things we've talked about, you know, this, this, uh, modularity, this flexibility, you know, how, how we're able with intention to bring our confidence that it's secure, that it can handle, you know, the traffic and the volume, you know, which not all platforms can, um, that, you know, with the right hosting, with the hype right hosting providers again wordpress can fulfill um, these specific briefs um there is um yeah the the, the really bringing that to, to to bear is a is a, is something that uh yeah we love to do of course as you know and uh i think that again on the on the on the on the user side on the editorial side also seeing like them can actually enjoying using the system, uh, actually, um, you know, uh, not battling against the system, uh, these hidden points of pride, you know, those little details that you maybe got right or the workflow that works as it should. Um, when they work as they should, they sink into the background quite quickly. I remember them. Yeah. Um, again, there's so many little details there, but those are the things really that, um, you know, in terms of the work that we do, that, 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 that brings what WordPress naturally already gives you um, but it's so nice that you can refine it to uh, hit these briefs so well. Um, and really that WordPress or any solution like this is, is such a sum of its parts. And the fact that WordPress can check the box all the way through those sums of parts and you know that the software itself is, is intuitive and, and, and easy, uh, easy <laughs> relatively to produce and, and you can uh, extend as opposed to you know, build, you can mm -hmm you can uh, have choice both as, a, as someone who builds a thing and somebody that receives things. Um, that overall makes it yeah, immensely powerful. I suppose. It's like a, uh, a common uh, phrase in the industry that no one loves their CMS. Uh, and I feel like that's one of the most gratifying things when we're working with an organization. I remember this at the Sun with the editorial team, like the people who are using their CMS, uh, seeing that shift from like, this is a tool that feels like it gets in my way and like a pain I have to endure in order to achieve what I want to achieve to like something I actually enjoy doing and feel empowered by. Okay, well, thanks very much. Great to talk to you today.